Good day to everyone. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the solution to the wave equation. And the wave equation is uh, a second order partial differential equation, which says that q sub xx of xt is equal to one over c squared times q sub tt of xt, where the values of x are from the closed interval zero, one, and the values of t are all non-negative real numbers. And you should, we should also pay attention to the conditions that our wave equations should satisfy. So there are four of them. And um, we will have to make use of each one of these conditions later on to find our uh, final solution for the wave equation. So uh, to start off the solution, um, the idea is to let the solution Q of xt take on the form capital X of x times capital T of t. Now, uh, we are putting the form of our solution in this format because we want to take advantage of the separability qualities of this equation later on. Um, if we try to make a direct substitution of this function into our PDE, then what we will get is capital X double prime of X times capital T of T is equal to one over C squared times capital X of X times capital T double prime of T. Operating on this equation, we now make the separability properties of the solution function to rewrite the last equation as capital X of X double prime all over capital X of X is equal to one over C squared times capital T double prime of T all over capital T of T. Now, um, the left side of our equation is solely in terms of x, while the right side of the equation is solely in terms of t. And because uh, this expression is true for all possible values of x and t in their respective domains, then we will have to say that each side of this equation will actually be equal to a common value of a constant. And furthermore, um, it can be shown that to have a meaningful solution for our function, we will have to assume this common value of a constant to be equal to negative lambda squared. It can be shown also that we can, if we assume that this common value of a constant is greater than or equal to zero, then the only possible solution Q of xt we will get is the zero function. And this uh, function will actually be contradictory because it will only be true only if f of x is equal to zero. And with that said, we now continue with our solution. Uh, operating on uh, the side separately, for this function or this equation, we now get uh, capital X double prime of X plus lambda squared capital X of X is equal to zero and uh, capital T double prime of T plus C squared lambda squared times capital T of T is equal to zero. The first equation will have a general solution given by capital X of X equal to A times cosine of lambda X plus B times sine of lambda X. Whereas the second differential equation will have a general solution given by capital C cosine of C lambda T plus D times sine of 
C lambda T. So now we have uh, some kind of solution for our differential equation, which is given by the quantity A cosine of lambda X plus B times sine of lambda X times a capital C of cosine C lambda T plus D times sine of C lambda T. Uh, to which we now apply our first uh, condition, which says that of zero T is equal to zero, which implies that Q of zero T will be equal to, so upon substitution of X equals zero into our function, this will be A plus zero times the quantity C cosine C lambda T plus D sine of C lambda T which should be equal to zero. Now, since the expression given by this is a function of t, which is not identically the zero function, then we infer that a should be equal to zero. And so we edit our function and write it out into the form q of xt is equal to b sine of lambda x times c cosine of c lambda t plus d sine of c lambda t. Now, to simplify our expression, I will bring uh, the coefficient b into the bracketed expression uh, to give us sine of lambda x times p of cosine c lambda t plus q times sine of c lambda t. And uh, from this, uh, we'll actually uh, win, or from this, we know that P is just equal to BC and Q is equal to BD. All right. Uh, and so we now use our second uh, condition, which says that uh, Q of 1t is equal to 0. Uh, this would imply that Q of 1t will be equal to sine of lambda times P cosine of C lambda t plus Q sine of C lambda t equal to zero. Uh, since again, the expression given by uh, P cosine of C lambda T plus Q of, or Q times sine of uh, C lambda T is a function of T not identically equal to zero, then we infer that sine of lambda will be equal to zero which implies that lambda will have to take on the form n times pi or multiples of pi where n takes on value from the positive integers. Okay, so again, once more, we try to edit our function q of xt. So this will imply that q of xt 
will be equal to sine of n pi x times uh, p cosine c n pi t plus q times sine of c n pi t. Now, because uh, this function is actually dependent on the value of n, and for every value of n, this function is actually a solution to the uh, differential equation or the wave equation, then what we can do is we can index the solution to become q sub n of x t to be equal to sine of n pi x times p sub n cosine c n pi t plus q sub n times sine of c n pi t so that this would imply that in general the solution would become the infinite sum of all these functions q sub n of t. So let's try to write that down. So q of x t is equal to the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of q sub n t and x t rather, okay, which is sine of n pi x times p sub n cosine c n pi t plus q sub n of sine c n pi t. And now we are going to use uh, the rest of the uh, conditions. Uh, we know that q of x0 is equal to f of x. This would imply, uh, after direct substitution, the fact that q of x0 will be equal to the infinite sum from 1 to infinity of sine of n pi x times uh, if we substitute t equals zero into the cosine expression we will get a one so multiplied with pn so we get pn and if we substitute t equals zero into the sine expression and uh, multiply it to qn then we will get zero and this will have to be equal to f of x and this is just equivalent to the equation infinite sum from 1 to infinity equal or rather p sub n sine of n pi x is equal to f of x. Okay, now this is just a Fourier sine series where we can actually determine the coefficients of p sub n. So making use of that fact, then we know that this will be an infinite sum where the coefficient p sub n will be equal to twice the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x times sine of n pi x dx. And so we try to uh, indicate that. So let's try to highlight this. Okay. So this will be the expression for the coefficient piece of n. And so now we have to determine uh, the expression for the coefficient q sub n. And we make use of that by the condition q sub t of x0 is equal to g of x. Okay. But before that, uh, let's first 
write again our function q of x t, which is just the infinite sum from one to infinity of sine n pi x times uh, p sub n cosine c n pi t plus q sub n times sine of c n pi t. Since we need to differentiate this with respect to t, then what we get upon doing that will be the following function. So it's going to be the infinite sum from 1 to infinity of sine n pi x times a negative pn c n pi times sine of c n pi t plus c n pi times q sub n of cosine c n pi t. Okay, so, so far so good. And we continue uh, the solution by substituting zero for t. So upon doing that, we get the following. So q of t of x zero will be equal to the sum from one to infinity of uh, sine n pi x times the following expression. So upon substituting t equals zero into the bracketed expression, we will get c n pi q n and cosine c n pi t will be equal to one and what we want is for this to be equal to g of x. So let's try to rewrite this in a neater way. Uh, so this will imply then that the infinite sum from one to infinity of n q n sine n pi x will have to be equal to one over c pi g of x. And again, this is just uh, an expression for the Fourier sine series for the function one over c pi times g of x. And so we conclude that the coefficient n times q sub n will be equal to uh, two over c pi times the integral from zero to one of g of x times sine of n pi x dx so that qn will be equal to 2 over cn pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of g sub x times sine of n pi x dx. And so now we have come to an expression for the evaluation or determination of the coefficient q sub n. And so we now just wrap up our um, function solution for our wave equation. So therefore, uh, q of x t will be equal to the infinite sum from one to infinity of sine of n pi x times p sub n times cosine c n pi t plus q n sine of c n pi t where p sub n will be equal to two times the integral from zero one of f of x times sine of n pi x dx and q sub n is equal to 2 over c n pi times the integral from 0, 1 
of g of x times sine of n pi x dx. And so that ends our discussion of the solution of the wave equation. And thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.